So we're going to do unit 2A a little bit here for you. Step one in the three-step process is that they call use, understand, solve, explain. So the first thing you want to do is understand the problem. And so you're going to think about what the problem's asking, draw yourself a picture or a diagram. I do that a lot even on a really simple one. And try to figure out like what the answer is supposed to be. Like, can you tell? Is it supposed to be a time and specific units? Those kinds of things. All right. And then try to just figure out in your head, how do I get from these pieces of information I know to where I want to end up? As you read and reread the problem, you may have to think about um, the problem some more and continue to advise what your plan is. All right. So in the next step, what you're going to do is you're going to solve the problem. So you want to get any needed information. If it's a multi-step problem, try to keep it neat and organized so that you can make sense of what you're working on. Double check your math so that you don't carry an error all the way through. And again, if it seems like you're going nowhere, reevaluate, right? So then step three is explain the result. So look at your answer and think, does that make any sense? Do I, I want to recheck my calculations? Do I want to, is there another way I can look at this to check my math? Um, try to identify any assumptions you made. Were they good assumptions? Are they bad assumptions? Uh, then write your answer clearly, concisely, and make sure that, again, you use the right units and the units make sense for the kind of question you were asked. All right, so units of a quantity describes what's being measured or counted, right? If I tell you to go to the store and get 12, you don't know, did I tell you to go get 12 gallons of milk, 12 eggs, 12 Cokes, 12 cases of beer, all right? And so unit analysis is the process that we use when we're working with units to solve problems. Okay, so let's do these problems, all right? Um, and again, kind of remember we're first taking the time to be sure we understand the problem, then we're going to solve, and then we're going to make sure that our answer makes sense, okay? So we're buying 30 acres of farmland, all right, at $12,000 per acre, all right? And so it wants to know what's the total cost. So total, right, means I need to know more about all these acres. So if we do it as a unit analysis problem, we would have 30 acres times $12,000 per acre. And so now when I multiply those together, right, I'm going to get $360,000, right? And so let's think about that. Does that make sense? Is that a reasonable number? And there's no reason that I see that it's not, okay? So it seems to make sense. It seems to be a reasonable answer. So the total cost was $360,000. All right, now let's look at another problem. So this one says, show operations in units clearly to answer the question, what's the total distance traveled when you run seven laps around a 400 meter track? So you've got a track that's 400 meters and I'm gonna run around it seven times, All right? So this is, seems a little over simple, right? But you're going to have a 400 meter track and it's 400 meters, right, per lap. And then I'm going to multiply it times seven laps to get what? 2,800 meters total, right? Because the laps cancel each other out and I'm just left with meters. I have to be sure to include that in my answer. The next is a con next example I want to work for you is a conversion problem. 
And this conversion problem counts on you recognizing that we can multiply any number by 1, and it'll still be the same number, right? So we're talking about feet and inches. So I need a conversion factor from feet to inches. So we know that 12 inches is equal to 1 foot. So we know that 12 inches over 1 foot is equal to 1, and it also means that 1 foot over 12 inches is 1. And the way I write it depends on which way I need to go from inches to feet or feet to inches. So I have 9 feet, and I want to know how many inches it is, so I need to put feet on the bottom in my conversion. This is the conversion factor that would put feet in the bottom, so I do 1 foot, 12 inches, and 9 times 12 is 108. So I'm going to go back and check my units. I have feet here in the numerator, I have feet here in the denominator, they cancel out, and I'm left with inches. Okay, so let's think about what some of the keywords and the math operation, mathematical operation, that goes with it would look like. So per means division. So miles per hour is miles divided by hours. Of, or a hyphen, hyphen is multiplication. So kilowatt hyphen hours is kilowatt hours, kilowatts times hours. Square. It's when you raise something to the second power, so it would be like feet times feet, or feet squared. They'll do say square feet or feet squared. And then cube or cubic is the same thing, except you're going to raise it to the power of three. And so that would be feet times feet times feet, or feet with the exponent three. And we would say cubic feet or feet cubed. So conversion factors is a statement that lets us move back and forth between unit, right? And so some common conversion factors you might know are 1 foot equals 12 inches, 1 day equals 24 hours. And the reason we use this is because in math the rule is we can do anything, we can multiply any number, any equation, any anything by 1 and it's still the same thing. So we use this very specifically in this class to change units, right? So since 12 e inches is equal to 1 foot, we can say that 12 inches divided by 1 foot is equal to 1, or we can write it the other way. 1 foot can be in the numerator and 12 inches can be in the denominator. And the conversion factor we'll use, whether inches is in the numerator or the denominator, will depend on what we need in the problem. Oh, this is a great cartoon, right? So she says it's summer vacation, 94 days without a single homework assignment or test. And then all of a sudden she says, that's 2,256 hours, all those minutes, over 8 million seconds. And summer just got there, and of course, she's like, oh. Now your math brain shows up once it's summer. So, so how would she have done that, right? That 94-day conversion. To get it all the way to seconds, she'd have had to use a bunch of conversion factors. So, 94 days, you would multiply that by 24 hours and one day. Now, why did we put the 24 hours on top? Because one day was in the numerator in the 94 days, so we need days in the denominator now to get rid of it. And so, in the next conversion factor, 60 minutes is equal to one hour. We need to put hours in the bottom because we want to get rid of the hours again. And so then again, with minutes to seconds, we do the same thing, and we multiply that all out. We get 8,121,600 seconds. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Okay, so we want to talk now about unit conversions when some of the units are raised to a power. So let's start with talking about yards and feet, right? So we know one yard is three feet, right? So one yard squared is one yard times 
one yard. All right, so if I instead now think about these yards as feet, and I say it's three feet times three feet, three times three is nine, feet times feet is feet squared. So one yard squared becomes nine feet squared. And you can see that here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have to remember to do that in conversions where the units have powers. Okay, so we've got how many cubic yards of soil are needed to fill a planter that is 20 feet long by 3 feet wide by 4 feet tall. So we have a planter. Okay, not necessarily to scale here. And it is 20 feet long and it's three feet wide and then it's going to be four feet tall. Clearly not to scale. So first let's talk about the volume. So you have a couple of choices at this point. I can work the problem in feet then change to yards or I can change it to yards now. I think that I would prefer to just go ahead and work it out and then change it to yards. So volume's going to be, right, length times width times height. So Okay, and so that's going to be equal to 20 times 3 is 60, so 240 cubic feet, right? All right, so now let's do the conversion from cubic feet to cubic yards. So the volume is going to be 240 feet cubed, right? But I need to get rid of feet cubed. So I need feet to be in the denominator. And what would be the conversion factor? It would be three feet is equal to one yard. And since I have volume and it's cubed, I'm going to have to do that three times. All right, so now I have feet cubed here, and then I have feet, feet, and feet. So these will successfully cancel each other out. And now we're going to do the actual math on that, and it's going to be 240 divided by 3, right? Divided by 3, divided by another 3. Then we get 8.88 .88 cubic yards because we have yard times yard times yard, so we get 8.88 .88 cubic yards. Okay, for our next problem, we have this example. A student told me they bought fabric at Xmart because their price of $3 per square foot was better than Ymart's price of $15 per square foot. Did the student buy the fabric at the best price? Why? All right, so Xmart was $3 per square foot. Okay, and then Ymart was $15 per yard squared. All right. And so we want to know which one's the best price. So we need to get these in the same units to compare them. So I'm going to change X marks $3 per square foot to square yards. All right. Now remember that the conversion between yards and feet is 
one yard equals three feet, right? So to get rid of feet in the denominator, I need feet in the numerator. And because it's squared, I'm going to have to do it twice. So three feet is one yard. And then again, times three feet is equivalent to one yard. All right, and now I have feet, feet, cancel with feet squared. So I have three times three times three. So that's going to be nine times three, which would be $27 per yard squared. So no, the student did not get the best price. Now let's do a second example. And this one is about the Kentucky Derby. So the length of the Kentucky Derby horse race is 10 furlongs. How long is the race in miles? So this is a unit conversion problem as well. So we know the race is 10 furlongs. And we know that one furlong is going to be equal to 0.125 miles. So we need furlongs in the denominator. And so we use this. We put furlong in the denominator, 0.125 miles in the numerator. And when we multiply that out, my furlong will cancel and that will be 1.25 miles for my final answer. All right, one more example. Two more, maybe. All right, here's one. A hose fills a hot tub at a rate of 4.5 gallons per minute. How many minutes will it take to fill the 400-gallon hot tub? All right, so I'm just going to draw a little picture here. Three simple hot tubs, right? And that's going to be my water going in. So this is 400 gallons, right? And then that water is coming in at 4.5 gallons per minute. And now I've drawn this little picture to help me understand, right? And it says, how many minutes will it take to fill a 400 gallon hot tub? So I know. In the end, I need these minutes on top. My final answer is minutes. So I take 400 gallons and I really want to divide that by 4.5 gallons per minute, which when we write it as unit analysis would look like this, 4.5 gallons per minute. That is equivalent to writing 400 gallons divided by 4.5 gallons per minute. OK, so let's do the math here. And that will be 400 divided by 4.5. And that's going to be 88.9. Okay, let's do one last, solve one last problem, and we will need to do some unit conversions. So we have a new sidewalk, and it's going to be four feet wide and 150 feet long and filled to a depth of six inches or a half foot. So I'm just going to skip, I'm using this use model, right? Understand, solve, explain. So to understand, I'm just going ahead and drawing myself a little picture, right? Volume is length times width times depth in this case. Really would be height normally, right? And it's going to be 150 feet. It's going to be four feet wide. And then it's going to be a half a foot tall. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set my formula up, right? So I got 150 feet times 4 feet 
times 0.5 feet. All right. And now I need to change each one of these feet to yards. And remember, we have three feet equals one yard is our conversion factor. So we can write that either as one is equal to three feet over one yard, or one is equal to one yard over three feet, depending on whether we need feet in the numerator or the denominator. In this case, we need it in the denominator, so we're going to use that one. So now we will do that times. Now we have to put the three feet in the bottom. One yard times, I'm going to go to the next line, one yard over three feet. And do it finally one last time, one yard over three feet. Now I'm going to go through and check all my units. This foot cancels with that foot. This foot cancels with that foot. This foot cancels with that foot. All right? And so now I can grab my calculator and work that out. So I'm going to have 150 times 4 times 0.5 divided by 3 divided by 3 divided by 3. And I get 11.1 yards cubed. And so we normally would say that cubic yards, 11.1 cubic yards. So I hope this example helped you.